So now in this video, we're looking at the OR gate. You may see, you know, like a couple of switches uh, wired as an OR gate for whatever uh, reason. You got a switch in one room, maybe a switch in another room, but you want them to control the same load. And that means that uh, you can press one uh, switch in this case. We're going to talk about, you know, pressing the switch on and off. Now the switch is on, or we could turn this one on right there. If you don't touch either of them, that's one of the other states. Since there's two switches, we have four total states. You can also press both of them, and with the OR gate, um, the output's gonna be high, as long as both inputs are high or on, however you want to uh, refer to it. Since we're using switches, they come from the same uh, positive supply right there. So um, the way we have this wired up is perfectly fine to press them both at the same time. Just whatever current goes through, some will go through that switch, some will go through that switch, no problem. Here is the uh, symbol for the uh, NOR gate. Uh, you should be able to see like a point um, there. There, This one is kind of hard to see, but there's also the curved back right there. So you know it's not an AND gate, even if you think that's kind of uh, rounded a little too much. This side is rounded, whereas the AND gate is straight. Now, if we were, applying digital uh, signals to an OR gate that was wired like this where they come together over there um, you could you could not uh, do that directly because maybe this one will be at a high voltage uh, plus 5 volts maybe that one will be come from uh, 0 volts you know they're they're not being fed from the same uh, exact uh, voltage and um, so that would be a short circuit it could run through so you gotta be careful if you modify this with other circuitry. With mechanical switches, all we are doing is either connecting to the positive supply or we are not. We're not connecting to anything. And we could have uh, different positive supplies as well as long as they have uh, the ground. So maybe I'll uh, try to come up with um, some more videos like that. I know I have done um, some, some OR gate videos where I had different uh, power supplies. Uh, but we won't dwell on that too much. So yeah, hopefully you can see that little point there. Here is the true table again. The only time the output is low, in this case the LED is off, is if both inputs are low, which is the open position, which is off. If we close, turn on any of the switches, the LED turns on. It can be all of them too. The uh, OR gate does not have to be two inputs. We could have like ABC for three, but then there'd be a longer list uh, right here. Otherwise, the list is going to be the same. As long as uh, there's no on switch, the output's going to be off. But if one or more of uh, the switches are on, then the LED is going to be on. And uh, so, yeah, you could say like one is either high or uh, like closed switch or close to five volts. That's what that meant. Uh, low could be zero, could be low or close to zero volts right there, which would be an open uh, switch if we were doing switches. So I kind of misread that. I made this diagram a long time ago, but uh, that's that's what that means, close to zero volts or five volts. Now, when it comes to uh, building this on the breadboard, again, these switches uh, tend to like pop out. Sometimes they do better uh, than others, and it might depend on which uh, switch. I try to put the switches down there more, um, but if I have an integrated circuit, uh, sometimes, yeah, this one, starting to work its way out. It was holding, now it's holding again. So you can modify the pin so it'll go on a board better. These have been inserted a lot into this board, so they're holding better than they used to. They used to like go flying out. Um, so you may want to modify the pins if you are using uh, switches for the first time on the board. Uh, when you buy them, these are commonly in kits. Um, but I like to leave them where they'll still fly out, just as a reminder that uh, when they're new, they don't put in. So I can put positive over there. The top two pins are always connected to each other and the bottom two pins are always connected together. If you try to put it in the wrong way on a breadboard, it won't line up if you have these particular switches, which again are common in uh, kits. And um, so yeah, those are always uh, connected. If I put something there and then had it go towards ground, it would always be powered. Be aware of that. Now, um, we have this one. So I put the positive up there. I uh, did the positive over there just to show we could also come from that side. Again, these two are always connected. Those two are always connected. When I press the button, all four are connected. So when you press the button, it will jump across kitty corner as well. Top and bottom are always connected. 
we're just bridging that gap. And hopefully you can see here, uh, we come to the same point just like the uh, schematic shows. In fact, uh, even though this is going to a different row than that one, uh, there's a jumper that connects those two rows together. So that's all one node, one connection point. Just in case I was kind of confusing. This is a, a pretty simple topic in the grand scheme of things. So I'm going to explain a little bit more. Uh, then these two jumpers, they also come to the same node, the same point, and um, that's part of uh, uh, this side of the switch. That's all one big node right there, all those uh, rows. Coming to the long lead anode, short lead to cathode, I got to a resistor and uh, headed to ground. Now on the uh, diagram, I got the resistor before the LED, and I think that's usually how people wire stuff, but not so much when I make breadboard circuits because um, the red LED does not uh, jump across. I'd have to like bend the wires and stuff. It's uh, just easier to have the LEDs go to the next spot and then have the resistor act kind of like a jumper right there. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, when it comes to the output, I think it may say X sometimes, but a lot of times it will say Y. Um, so just, uh, you know, you may not even see input and out up there. It might just be like A, B, Y and maybe A, B, X or, or something. Just be aware that, uh, you know, once you look at a couple of true tables, though, it should be pretty obvious uh, what it's trying to tell you. There's all kinds of circuitry that includes uh, true tables um, for things. There's, uh, I believe, six logic gates, and there's a lot of other circuitry that's technically made up of logic gates, probably mostly NAND gates. Um, but, uh, you know, they have inputs, and based on the condition of those inputs, you will have various outputs. So again, this uh, went on longer than uh, you know probably should, but again, this one is kind of intended for people uh, brand new to electronics. So I kind of covered extra stuff. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting on the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.